सो लेट मी फर्स्ट थैंक द ऑर्गेनाइजर स्पेशली उर्गो श्री दीपंकर झा एंड प्रोफेसर एलेक्स फॉर इनवाइटिंग मी टू सच ए नाइस कॉन्फ्रेंस एंड दिस इज द वर्क आई एम गोइंग टू टेल दिस इंटरप्ले अमंग नॉन लोकलिटी मेजरमेंट इन कंफर्टेबिलिटी एंड अनसर्टेनिटी इट इज नॉट बेस्ड ऑन एनी न्यू वर्क actually maybe it's kind of a review of some of the work and maybe useful for students <coughs> uh this measurement in compatibility sometimes after learning a little bit quantum mechanics uh, my feeling was that uh, maybe uh, measurement in compatibility sometimes expressed in terms of complementarity uh, the formalism that was given by paul bush mitelski and ekadelati sometimes we i use complementarity and incompatibility in the same sense and uncertainty sometimes i was thinking that this is measurement incompatibility that is more fundamental because na here nature tells you that there are some measurements or there are some observables which cannot be verified jointly or simultaneously whereas uncertainty i am talking about preparation uncertainty preparation uncertainty refers to the Uh, theory, actually, kind of theory and kind of a state you have constructed. Like, if you take quantum mechanics, then of course there are dispersion for states. But if you take a spin up particle, then if you consider Bell model, then for those states there is no dispersion, and in particular for Bohm theory, uh, in principle there is no dispersion for the observable because uh, using Bohm theory you can. predict the measurement result of every observable if you are given the whole whole uh, details of the measurement setup <coughs> so so and it is indeed true that this measurement incompatibility uh, and so one of the very important in here behind the bars of quantum mechanics as i told you that uh, it is measurement incompatibility Uh, which tells that nature does not allow certain observable to be jointly measured it has nothing to do with the theory that i am going to emphasize <coughs> of course this incompatibility by itself cannot forbid those observable to possess a definite value for the individual system sometimes we confuse this uncertainty or preparation uncertainty with uh, individual particle uh, does not have certain values for some observable sometimes we confuse so here there is measurement incompatibility and also there is quantum non locality where quantum non locality tells that quantum theory if you want to replace quantum theory by some more realistic theory but you cannot do it uh, if the theory is simultaneously real and local now these two concepts measurement incompatibility and this non locality these two concepts have been shown not only deeply connected in quantum mechanics but they are deeply connected in a more uh, general uh, theory which is of course satisfies uh, which respects uh, relativity principle <coughs> what are the relation if you consider only bipartite system the result is if a no if the no signal in theory is non local then there must exist incompatible measurement it is not only true for quantum mechanics it is a more general statement if you not if you consider a no signal in theory and that the, if that theory is non local then there must exist some observable which cannot be verified simultaneously in quantum mechanics the reverse is also true for any two incompatible measurements there is violation of bell's inequality implying non locality this result was proved by uh, michael wolf and uh, and his collaborators <coughs> and there is another result which tells the upper bound of no so if you consider a no signal in theory and if you consider bipartite system then the upper bound of the non locality in particular upper bound of the bell's use expression in that particular theory is determined by the degree of incompatibility what this degree of in incompatibility i am going to define and there is another result by oppenheim and his collaborators which tells that degree of non locality of a no signal in theory is determined by the combined effect of steering and uncertainty though in the paper 
published in science, there is no mention in the title, there is no mention of the theory. It was mentioned on this question of answer, and it was only mentioned, but actually, the Belfield violation of a particular theory is determined by the combined effect of steering and uncertainty. So, we consider, so to get uh, the results, so we start with a more general no signaling theory, where there is a set of states and set of observables, <coughs> and there is a rule like this, uh, analogous to Born rule in quantum mechanics. I mean, if this is a state, this is observable, then what is the probability that if I perform the measurement of this observable, what is the probability that I get the i result? So these are probabilities and they, so they must be normalized. <coughs> and in particular for our discussion, we will consider only measurements with binary outcomes, <coughs> like you see in observables. And so, so you consider a measurement of A, which has two possible outcomes, plus one and minus one, these are the probabilities, <coughs> and if you want to find the average of A, then it is given by this expression. Now we consider joint measurement, two observables, uh, sorry, two observable A1 and A2, we consider two observable, both with binary outcome, an observable, and these two observable A1, A2, can be sim verified simultaneously if there is another observable, we name it A12, which is four outcome, which has four outcomes, say, where i and j both are plus one and minus one. So this probability should be defined. This is uh, probability, normalization condition, and it should also reproduce the marginal statistics of the marginal observable of A1 and A2. So this, this two condition is marginality condition and if it is satisfied for, for all possible states, then you can tell that joint measurement exists for these two observable. Now in particular in quantum mechanics, we know there are observable that cannot be measured jointly. Like uh, you, can see, you can consider, you can consider position and momentum and you can also consider for discrete case, spin measurement along two different directions. They cannot be performed jointly. What do you mean by that? Because there are also steady measurements where you measure both position and momentum in the same experiment. Yeah, so I, I, I should be more precise. There is no sharp measurement. Sharp. So I am considering sharp measurement for the time being. So now I am introducing my sharp observation. <coughs> so, answer concept of unsolvable is like this. You consider a uncertainness in the observable can be introduced in very many ways. It is not unique, but I am considering them in a particular way. <coughs> so, consider a dichotomic observable, A, I mean observable with binary outcome. Then we define another observable where this A lambda and it has also, you can consider binary observable, so it is also plus one and minus one. Then this probability that if the state is omega and this observable is measured, what is the probability that the result is plus one? Then this probability can be expressed as combination of these two probability, which is for sharp observable. So I am, we are introducing a parameter lambda. So these two probabilities can be written in this form where and if it is true for all the possible states, omega, uh, where lambda is in this range, then you can tell that this is the, A lambda is the unsharp counterpart of the sharp observable A. And for unsharp observable, you can, you can also calculate the average of this thing, which is very simple, lambda times the original average. I mean, average of the uh, sharp measurement. Now, what is degree of incompatibility? In a general no signaling probabilistic theory, there may exist observable which are not jointly measurable like in quantum mechanics. But it may happen that unsharp counterpart of those observable may be jointly observable. So you take two observable which are not jointly measurable, you make both of them to be unsharp, then 
it may happen that now they are jointly measurable. Now, lambda optimal is defined in the following way. Lambda optimal is the maximum value of the unsharpness parameter for which every pair of the dichotomic observables are jointly measurable in a notion many probabilistic theory. So, you consider a probabilistic general probabilistic theory. Now, it has set of observable. Now, you, you randomly choose any two observable. You want to make them jointly measurable. So, you make them unsharp. Lambda optimal is the maximum value that has to be given to the observable to make them jointly measurable and it has to be true for any two randomly chosen observable. So, it is a, so lambda optimal is a property of the theory you have constructed. So, it has been optimized. <coughs> so, lambda optimal can be interpreted as degree of incompatibility of a theory. But this lambda optimal is a property of the theory, but you can, you can also another lambda optimal like you take three observable at a time and you want to make them jointly measurable, then what is the value of lambda optimum so that any three observables chosen randomly can be measured jointly. So, in this way various degree of uh, this parameter can be derived, but for our purpose for if, if, if you consider two measurements and make them jointly measurable, then we are considering that lambda optimal for which any randomly chosen two observable can be jointly measured. What about this lambda optimum for various theories? In classical theory, lambda optimal is equal to 1 because even sharp measurement can be jointly measured in classical world. And there is a result by Paul Bush and Amy Stevens published in 2014. They have proved that for any no signaling probabilistic theory with a restriction that a state space is a convex compact subset of a finite dimensional Hilbert uh, vector space, then lambda optimal must be greater than equal to half. <coughs> now, in quantum mechanics, Paul Bush in 1986 derived this condition that if you consider any two spin observable, then if you take lambda optimal is equal to 1 by root 2, any two randomly chosen spin observable are jointly measurable. So, in quantum mechanics, this lambda optimal is equal to 1 by root 2. And in this case, in particular, PR box theory, this lambda optimal is equal to half. <coughs> what about the higher dimension? I mean, Paul Bush derived this thing for his spin case, I mean, for two dimensional Hilbert space. What about this? Uh, what about the result lambda value of lambda optimal for higher dimensional uh, Hilbert space? So, we have proved this result in maybe in 2013 or 14. We consider any two dichotomic observable, sharp observable, so they are represented by projector. Now, there is a theorem that which tells that if you consider this kind of measurement, they can be block diagonalized with the highest size of the block is 2 cos 2. So, ultimately, this problem can be broken in various two-dimensional Hilbert space. So, these results, boost test results, these results can be used for each block and you can prove that this, this is true for even this lambda optimal is equal to 1 upon root 2 is not true, only true for uh, uh, two-dimensional Hilbert space, but it is generic that if unsharpness parameter is 1 by root 2, any two projective measurement can be simultaneously measurement if you introduce this amount of unsharpness. Ah, this was discovered in 2013 here. Now, so we consider this degree of incompatibility and its role and its status in various theory. Let us now come to the uh, question of Bell's inequality. Actually, Bell's inequality was originally derived using conditions like reality, locality, but that was imposed on, on underlying theory, I mean ontic theory. But Bell's inequality can also be derived by imposing some condition 
in the operational theory, the theory you are discussing, like a no signaling theory, quantum theory, we can discuss the same thing. And, and fine actually uh, derived Bell's inequality first considering joint probability distribution. Then there is a result which I am using and also Professor Weizmann derived Bell's inequality. Again, on some condition given to the operational theory like predictability and no signaling. And here it has been derived by using these two conditions. If you consider two particles, and on particle one, you consider two measurements, A1 and A2, and you assume that they are jointly measurable, and if the theory is no signaling, then Bell's inequality is satisfied. And see, all these assumptions are not on the underlying theory, but the theory, operational theory itself. Then it can be easily derived, because in quantum mechanics, in, you know Bell's inequality is violated. Then what it tells? In quantum mechanics, Bell's inequality is violated. Then what it tells? Quantum mechanics cannot violate these things. Then there are some observables which cannot be jointly measured. Now, if you introduce uncertainty, then you can make this A1, A2, if it is not originally jointly measurable, after introducing the uncertainty, you can make them jointly measurable, then it should satisfy Bell's inequality, and using that, you can derive this condition. So this is the Bell CH quantity, and if you know the lambda optimal, I mean, degree of incompatibility of a particular no signaling theory, then you have derived a result like this. CHSH quantity is bounded by this quantity, which is 2 by lambda optimal. It is the property of this theory, as I told you, lambda optimal, <coughs> for all choice of dichotomy observable. So, this degree of incompatibility gives me a upper bound for the Bell CH quantity. That is why I was trying to tell that, that, that incompatibility is very powerful because nature tells you that you cannot do something and in, or introducing that in your field. And it gives a very basic kind of bound on CH, uh, CHSH quantity. <coughs> and this is a result which I told you earlier uh, that if A1, A2 are two incompatible quantum observable with binary outcome, then it has been proved uh, by by uh, Michael Wolf and also subsequently by Paul Bush that there exists a uh, quantum state rho AV and another two observable B1 and B2 on that side that this bound can be saturated. So in quantum mechanics, the bound that you see that can be saturated. <coughs> so as I told you, in, qu in quantum mechanics, this Lambda optimal is equal to 1 upon root 2, so the bound is 2 root 2, and in quantum mechanics there are a state as well as observable on both sides. Uh, you can choose them in such a way that this bound is saturated. This is my point. Now, as I was telling you that uncertainty also determines non-locality by, but, uh, sorry, uh, but not alone, uh, but along with stereo. Uh, STI. So, I am, uh, how much time do I have? Ten. Ten <laughs> so, actually, this is described by a game. This game is something like this: that this is Alice, this is Bob, and uh, Alice is given a question from. Uh, so there are two questions. One of the question will be given to Alice randomly. Similarly, to there are two questions, which uh, one of them should be given to Bob randomly, and they have to answer where Alice's answer is A, Bob's answer is B, then, and they are far away, they cannot communicate, then this uh, bell game is something like this, that uh, given input, they have to give the output, and they have to satisfy this condition in each case, and, uh, and it can be shown that, that by any local theory, uh, this cannot be satisfied by Alice and Bob, if they are not allowed to communicate. <coughs> and so, what are the necessary conditions for the to win this game with 100% probability? There must be steering. I mean, there must be good steering. Though I, I don't have a measure to tell what is good steering. And, and uncertainty, there should, there should be no uncertainty for 
Bob measurement says that. I mean, these are the conditional state depending on Alice's input and output. And these conditional states on both sides should have no uncertainty. Otherwise, they would not be able to satisfy this condition. So for 100% winning, there must be steering and there must be certainty for the state. What about quantum mechanics? Quantum mechanics has this steering, powerful steering. But in quantum mechanics, there is no state row for which two randomly chosen observables will have deterministic answer. And Oppenheim suggested a finding an uncertainty. Uh, if there is no uncertainty, this quantity should be one. And so this quantity is bounded by some uh, value. And in particular, in quantum mechanics, uh, it will consider sigma x and sigma z, these two observable. Then this quantity uh, is bounded by this quantity. And this is achieved also. But if we choose the eigenstate of sigma x plus sigma z by this, we should consider these observable and take the eigenstate of this observable, sorry, uh, then, then actually you have least uncertainty. And with this least uncertainty, you can win this game, not with probability one, because there is uncertainty, but with this probability. And this is, this is, in classical world, you can win this game with 75% probability. In quantum mechanics, uh, 85 around 85 percent. And uh, to win this game with this probability is equivalent to this Bell CH, uh, CH quantity is equal to 2 root 2. So, and, 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 and as I told you that for 100 percent winning there is a no signaling correlation which is famously known as Popescu's orlick correlation, where which satisfy both these conditions. That is called PR box. So in PR correlation, this lambda optimal is equal to half. So bound is four, but this bound is achieved by optimizing over uncertainty and this PR. So actually in this theory, there is no uncertainty. Classical theory, there is no uncertainty. But still, del uh, degree of incompatibility is bounded by two because lambda optimal is equal to one. But there is no uncertainty in classical theory, but there is no steering also. So Bell quantity uh, does not go beyond two. In quantum mechanics, degree of incompatibility tells that Bell quantity should not go beyond two root two. But it can be achieved also by its uncertainty and this theory. Uncertainty is such that it just reaches that bound given by degree of incompatibility. <coughs> now, it has been recently shown that these two concepts in quantum mechanics are equivalent. I mean, if there is a steering, then there is measurement incompatibility. If there is measurement incompatibility, there is a steering. But in any no signaling theory, steering, if there is a steering, then there must be measurement incompatibility. Because if there is no measurement incompatibility, then if, if you consider two measurements, then you can think of it as a single measurement with four outcomes if it is for, for binary case. So if in any no signaling theory, if there is a steering, there must be incom measurement incompatibility. But whether the converse holds, it's very difficult to tell, most possibly, without learning more structure about the theory. I'm not sure, but in quantum mechanics, these two, two concepts are same. I mean, equivalent. Now, we are coming to a second Stroy theory. I'm not going to describe a second Stroy theory, but, but there is a diagonal, there is steering, there is even dense coding, there is teleportation, and as there is steering in a spoken Stroy theory, then there must be incompatible measurement. And if there is incompatible measurement, then this lambda optimal cannot be equal to one. So the value 
we may not be able, I, I, we may not be able to calculate, but it is sure this value must be less than equal to one. Because there must be incompatibility as there exists the shear. Now, due to, now, if you consider a Sprechen's Troy theory, then this Bell quantity is bounded by this quantity, where this quantity must be less than or equal to one. So this Bell quantity in Troy theory is bounded by a quantity which is greater than two. Bound is greater than two. But by construction, a Sprechen's Troy theory is uh, local. It, it does not, its Bell quantity does not go beyond uh, two. So, Actually, this fine grained uncertainty tells that uncertainty is so high in Sprechen's Troy theory that even though there is nice steering, this uncertain amount of uncertainty is so high that it destroys the capacity of having Bell quantity greater than two. This high amount of uncertainty makes the Troy theory to satisfy Bell's inequality. <coughs> so, in Troy theory, measurement incompatibility and uncertainty do not match. I mean, the bound. Uncertainty does not allow to reach the bound given by the degree of incompatibility of the theory. Are there, so this is hypothetical theory I am discussing about. So there are another hypothetical theory, it is called a state space as a polygon structure and in particular if the n is equal to 5, then it is shown that uh, this quantity is bounded had lambda optimal, you can calculate and the, if you calculate this uh, Bell quantity, Bell quantity is 2 by lambda optimal for that particular theory and it is bounded by this quantity. Again, in this theory, this optimal value, I mean uncertainty and steering cannot, do not allow, does not, do not allow this Bell quantity to reach this bound. This highest amount of Bell violation is strictly less than uh, the quantity which is given by 2 by lambda optimal. And possibly this gap in uh, toy theory, this we could explain the non-violation of Bell's inequality in terms of finding and uncertainty relation. Maybe in this particular case, maybe the, the, this steering is also very non-trivial, uncertainty is also very non-trivial. So their joint effect will tell that why you cannot reach the bound given by the degree of incompatibility. So conclusion, so Clifton Bob Halverson, long back, maybe 2002, made an attempt to derive quantum mechanics for three, using three information theoretic principles. First is no signaling, second is impossibility of broadcasting like no cloning theorem, and impossibility of bit commitment. Of course, they constructed this theory on a given particular structure of the observable having Fischer algebra. But Still, they are emphasizing that uh, these three principles would give uh, unitary quantum mechanics. But toy theory actually satisfy all these three conditions without being quantum mechanics. Uh, it is a hypothetical theory and it, has, it, has, it is so different from quantum mechanics. It, it has finitely many states, finitely many observables. <coughs> so I was thinking that in future if we Using some principle, if we want to derive quantum mechanics, maybe, maybe we can put these two conditions that measurement incompatibility is non-trivial. I mean, the lambda optimal uh, is in this range without being equal to half and one. It is, if it is not equal to half, then PR box theory is rejected. And if it is not equal to one, also classical, you don't take classical theory. So it is non-trivial. And this condition that Bell quantity in that particular theory uh, saturates the bound given by the incompatibility of the uh, theory, degree of incompatibility of this theory. But I am not sure, my students uh, was the, uh, trying to tell that uh, this may be, uh, this bound may be saturated also for polygon theory if the size of the polygon is uh, even. So this may not work. I was thinking that whether whether quantum mechanics along with some other principles, uh, these two along with some other principle could be derived. But uh, if you consider these two, it will consider some of the hypothetical theories which is not quantum mechanics. Thank you for listening.
Well, uh, there is a question which is closely related to what you discussed, but maybe still slightly different, which is that instead of uh, imposing the no signaling condition, you simply assumed that there are two observables, observables uh, A, B, A prime, B prime settings for which there is a joint probability function, which is uh, reasonable. So then you derive the Bell then you, uh, then you derive the Bell inequality. This Just is Fein's, Fein's theorem. No, no, uh, Fein, this is uh, before Fein. That is, Wigner uh, just said that if you have a joint probability function, uh, then uh, the Bell inequality yeah, can be. holds. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I'm sorry, the Bell inequality is uh, violated. No, it, uh, I was telling you they, are, they can be measured jointly, <coughs> uh, then it is violated. I'm sorry, I, I did, I, I'm sorry, I said the wrong thing. The Bell inequality is a consequence of existence of a joint probability function. Now, the point uh, that I'm asking is that in the Bell local hidden variable theory, there is, of course, a joint probability function that one can easily construct in terms of the hidden variables, there is a joint probability for all these measurements. Uh, you are talking about Bell model? About in the hidden variable theory, there is a joint probability function. However, and of course, there is the Bell inequality. But without going into hidden variables, simply the existence of the joint probability also gives you the uh, same inequality. Yeah. Now the uh, question, when I was talking about this, I'm, I hope I'm uh, reproducing it accurately. George Sudarshan was in the audience, and he asked me, is it true also the other way around? That is, if there is a joint probability function, does it follow that local hidden variable theory can be constructed? Do you have any answer? No, for, for, for two observable on both sides and having binary outcome, this is necessary for this one. He's asking a larger question. But in general, it is not true, because God Marmin produced a uh, probability distribution, uh, which does not have a three, most probably four or three probability distribution. I mean, fine has uh, this kind of... Uh, there is a, thinking, but this there is is a different, by different question. Uh, actually, uh, Virendra and I, and also uh, Targan Mendon, uh, showed that Bell inequality, this usual Bell CHSH inequality, is not sufficient to guarantee the existence of a local hidden variable theory. But I am not talking about that. It's a slightly different thing. I am not talking about that. I am saying a very simple question which Sudarshan asked me, and I didn't have the answer. I still don't have the answer. But maybe you, since you have worked so much, you can figure it out. Which is the question, let me say it again. If there is a joint probability, then there is well inequality. Can you also say then that, that there is a local hidden variable? See, the reverse is already known. If there is a hidden I variable think theory, there Pines, is a joint in probability. In Pine's paper itself, and it's for two observable on both sides and with binary outcome, uh, it, it is true. Maybe for higher number of observable or higher, di higher dimension. Higher dimension or higher number of observable. I am, but I am telling that two observable on both sides are with binary outcome. They are equivalent. I think. Yeah, if you consider more observable, the answer is not so simple. Shivashis may have some comments. 
But anyway, for my purpose, actually, I was using this thing that if one side they are jointly measurable and if you impose the no signaling condition, then Belson no. equality can be derived. Okay. So I think the answer to the, the other way to look at Shashank's question is the following, that if you only look at this, uh, the original CHSS inequality, which pertains to two measurements on each side, uh, there you could imagine that there are inequalities for more than two measurements on each side, which go beyond CHSS. And uh, then if the, if the CHSS inequalities are satisfied, but these larger inequalities are not, then that would be a direct demonstration that there is the, the existence of uh, just this uh, core measurement distribution is not enough to guarantee the uh, Oh, that local and variable theory can be constructed. But still, I think that if you consider only two observables on both sides with binary outcome, it's what? So, any other questions? Any other questions? Comments? Okay, if not, let us thank Guru Prasad and let us thank all the speakers of this session.